Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and today we're going to talk about night vision and helmet setup for those of you that like to be able to work in the dark for things that go bump in the night. So John's going to tell us about that. He's going to show us one of his uh, his current helmet setup and all the little bells and whistles and cool toys he's got on it and the things that he teaches with it. Cool. So um, night vision's cool. It's a superpower. And uh, I think a lot of people don't understand it exactly. Uh, and so a little bit of a education on night vision, I guess. Uh, light comes in through one side, right? The light photons, the little particles of light. Those come in through one side and they go through a certain amount of channels and plates and they actually get multiplied to an extent and then become um, projected onto something called a phosphor screen. And that phosphor screen is what you look at and see in the dark. So it's a misconception that these are digital. They're actually analog. So you're not actually looking at a screen, like a TV screen with like pixels. You're looking at a phosphor screen, which is analog, and it's just you're looking at light. So if I held these up to the light when they're off, you could actually see through them to an extent. It's very dim because they're not activated by power. So once you power them, that's when they're pulling light in. They're actually multiplying it and letting you see in the dark. It's kind of cool. And they see the IR signature of objects. So every object in our world has some kind of IR signature or infrared signature, and that's the spectrum that they're seeing in, in the electromagnetic spectrum. So night vision used to be a, um, a boutique or I uh, mean, not boutique, but it used to be a very niche thing where a lot of guys didn't have access to it. It was very expensive and still is very expensive. Um, but it is something that more people understand now and more people are using on a, a regular basis. So uh, I see night vision being used by civilians for like hunting and pest control and like uh, hunting hogs and coyotes and stuff like that. Um, also for training and uh, navigation through the darkness. Astronomers have been using them for stargazing and things like that for a long time. And now we're seeing more law enforcement agencies are starting to use them domestically to see in the dark and do operationally uh, do surveillance and stuff like that that they have to do for their jobs, depending on what they're doing. And the military has been using them for decades and because it gave us an upper hand on a lot of things that we were doing against our adversaries, depending on where they were and what their technological advancements were. So, for example, uh, where I used to do my job um, in Afghanistan, uh, Afghanis don't usually have access to night vision unless it was lost by some military unit or if they were just using some kind of camera system, like a regular video camera, to see IR signatures. Or you had a generous American president who said, hey, here's billions of dollars worth of equipment. Uh, prior, prior to, yeah, they didn't have that. Now they have tons of night vision, and, uh, and I... I kind of wanted to go over there and see if I could barter some from like some extra dudes. But, uh, but now they have a lot of capabilities that they didn't before. And it's not even just the Afghani, you know, the, their, uh, government, it's the actual people that we were fighting for 20 years. So it's a little sore subject, but night vision in the grand scheme of things is no longer a, you know, a, a cool little club. Now it's very open sourced and very easy to get a hold of. Um, the manufacturers that are in the European uh, side of things, they they sell to almost anybody. The American side, we have more regulations like ITAR to deal with. Um, and the ITAR regulations state that you can't sell night vision of a certain grade out of the U.S. So the grade meaning like, let's say, like horsepower in a car, right? Like the horsepower is regulated on night vision. And so the general public can get them, but they can't be shipped or flown or anything outside the U S. So it's very interesting. I, think I saw something, I think it was probably TNBC's website where mm -hmm. it says you're not, you're not even allowed to fly with let them. people that oh, yeah. <laughs> are foreign citizens or foreign nationals, even hold them or, or touch look through them, or, them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that it's, it's true. That's part of the rules. Uh, I've never seen it enforced, but, that's like most rules. Um, when it when it comes down to it, it's it is regulated to an extent, and you uh, if you try to fly out of the U.S. or fly into the U.S. with something like this, it would be definitely something to get uh, tagged on and 
you would you'd get the uh, the whole rubber glove kind of treatment. Pathological um, exam. Yeah. That all sounds uh, fun. Do you need a finger up your butt? Um, so uh, night vision is pretty cool, though. It's it's a uh, it's definitely one of those things that if you experience it, you won't forget it. It's kind of cool in that way, where you're able to see things that you're not able to see with your regular eyes. So that's why I call it a superpower. Now, um, my night vision setup and my helmet, right? Our helmet's usually how you carry your night vision on your head. There are some alternatives like uh, skull crushers that they call them, but it's just essentially a strap system that goes around your noggin. Um, they also have a couple different little ones that are more like a cap, like a uh, almost like a, a baseball cap, uh, but they don't balance your night vision properly. And one of the things you'll miss out on when it comes to this is uh, realizing the longer you wear it, the more your neck and your head are going to be strained by the night vision being so front heavy away from your face. So if you don't balance your rifle or your rifle, your, your helmet in, um, in a more state of countering the, the balance on the front end or the weight on the front end, if you don't balance it properly, you'll actually uh, start to hurt yourself a little bit. So a military style helmet or a, a style helmet, a ballistic helmet like this, uh, helps balance it because it is a little heavier it's uh, ballistically rated for more shrapnel than it is actual or frag uh, versus bullets directly shot at it, but it can stop those to an extent, uh, depending on what the helmet's rated for. And then all the accoutrement on top of this bad boy are just to enhance my ability to use these. So the couple things that are on top of this thing. Uh, it's a guided tour. Yeah, a guided tour here. So right here you'll see a uh, lanyard system. It's actually one that I invented and in, in, uh, and sell on my website. Uh, I also have on this side a little camera, and this camera can only see during the day, so I use it for like more uh, observatory things or just cool pictures and video stuff. So it's a camera that attaches to my helmet with Velcro. Um, going along the back end, we have my ear protection that comes down because guns are loud, no matter what they say in the movies. Um, so the ear protection will go ahead and, and suction against my head and protect my hear my ears, but also uh, it, it's electronic so I can hear everybody just like normal. It actually enhances my hearing because I have um, some hearing damage. Um, Back here is a pouch that houses some extra batteries, but it also has weights, and those weights help me balance the actual helmet so it doesn't go front heavy or back heavy. And then on top is a strobe system that I'll use for uh, utilizing for helicopter use in IR or invisible or in different different spectrums so that I can be used uh, or I can be seen by uh, birds up higher up because I do play with helicopters every once in a while. And then on this far left side of my helmet, I have a rotating Velcro mount that is also one of my products. The Lola. The Lola. And uh, and the other thing was the Nerd. The Nerd. The bungee cord. Yeah, the night vision elastic retention device. And then the Lola is your light on lid attachment. <laughs> light on lid, which you can get on kineticconsulting.net. Yes. And so, uh, and this just has a handgun light, but the handgun light also goes into... Um, visible light and IR. So I could I can illuminate more. So if I was riding a vehicle of some sort and the headlights aren't usable because I'm trying to keep it dark, I can actually use this to illuminate ahead of me. Uh, like dirt bikes and quads and side-by-sides and stuff like that. Very, very useful. And so is that the Team Wendy helmet? This is a Team Wendy helmet, yeah. And then you've got the OpsCore EarPro system there? Mm-hmm. And I have, a, I have a couple Ops Core helmets. I have some Team Wendy ones. I have a bunch of different ones. I just brought one today. But, Very cool. But yeah, the every night vision class I have, actually, I have um, night vision rentals that you can rent and borrow some for the night, essentially, and use them for a class and learn more about them and see if it's even something you want to dive into because night vision can be very expensive depending on what you get into. It can go from three or four thousand dollars all the way to fifteen thousand dollars or even more forty thousand dollars for some stuff so is it the anvis ones those are the the quads the gp NVGs. the ones it you see as the t- the two yeah the ones you see in hollywood now because they <laughs> they caught on to those that was from uh zero dark 30 one, zero of, the, dark 30, one of those movies yeah. that showed it yeah um but the uh the quads are about 40 grand like they're expensive the 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 unit i have 
Mm-hmm. Don't drop them. Uh, they'll probably be fine if you drop them from like a reasonable height. They just won't be okay if you like throw them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't put any uh, any you know gusto behind them. Uh, but night vision is, is although expensive, um, a lot of fun. And depending on what you do, if you have enough land to like walk around your property in pitch black darkness with just starlight available, uh, it is really cool to be able to like do anything under that kind of lighting situation. And not only that, but be able to see things that people can't see normally you, we can't with our normal eyes see, uh, into the IR spectrum or, or the electromagnetic spectrum further into it as much as we can when we throw on night vision. So you actually can see in a different spectrum, just like that movie spectrum, but not like the movie spectrum, just similar. <laughs> uh, and you could actually see in different ways that the human eye just can't. So um, cats will look at you weird. They'll look at you and be like, wait, you can see me, man. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then you can, you can tell them you can. They'll also chase the lasers. <laughs> so so you, you can buy really expensive uh, cat toys for your rifle. Just like they do with laser pens. Exactly. So they can see the infrared lasers? Uh, some can. I don't think all cats can because I have one that chases it and one that doesn't. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I, maybe it's just that they don't want to, but both, both love the visible green laser. The other laser. one's just not impressed. Yeah, that's whatever, man. I've seen that before. But yeah. Cool. And so what type of classes do you teach with night vision and who are the students? Who's the the ideal student that should sign up? So I have a couple different classes. I have my night vision one class, which is a basic level of learn how night vision works and go through the process of finding its limitations uh, because everybody's night vision will be slightly different horse powered or specs. And those specs will give you different limitations that we'll, we'll find out in class. And, uh, and in there, we also find different ways to use our night vision to aim and shoot and uh, maneuver around objects and stuff like that. And then after that class, I have my night vision um, building tactics course or night vision CQB. And night vision CQB is a team-based class that is definitely not for the brand new shooter and more geared towards uh, law enforcement or military. But I do have civilians in the classes, and I don't shy away from teaching civilians tactics. So you're going to need to have a radio and everything and all that? Uh, no need for a radio, per se. You could if you came with, like, a group of friends that have radios. Um, but it's mainly, like, we'll just talk. Like, we'll use normal, our, our voices to talk to each other. Um, but there's no need to do a lot of talking in the way that I teach CQB. Uh, a lot of it's body language and a lot of it's uh, weapon-based communication or laser-based communication. So it's kind of cool. Cool. Same thing, the classes are on the website? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So if you guys want to sign up for, which I highly encourage you to, one of John's night vision classes, go to kineticconsulting.net and follow the prompts. And obviously, if you've got a class you would like him to host, or you want to host a class, a private class, same, same process that we did the last time.